I demonstrated this is I have the advantage in some cases by having the double blade. So he's got to worry about two blades coming at two angles, although he has the shield hand up. But you never want to give away a weapon if that's the only weapon you have. In this case, is I have two weapons. I also have two opponents in this scenario here, so I may want it. Sometimes it's hard for me to, to look at this guy and look at that guy, and, and they may be circling me quite a bit. It, it's too difficult for me there. So I might just try to create some distance. So if I'm not too worried about one person, I'll, I'll try to visually figure out, okay, who's gonna give me the most problems? So what I can do with this is I can try to close in the gap. Hopefully the more distance I have with multiple attackers, the better. We talked about earlier being in the sky grip here. These are the talon grips here. The knife throwing grip tends to be, in most cases, depending on the knife, this position here. It's almost like you're, uh, you have one index finger pointed up because that allows me to control that blade as I throw it. So you'll see many people, either whether they do a spin rotation on their throw or whether they do a straight throw, this tends to be a comfortable position. But the other one's gonna be nice and tight. So if I throw with my right, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and hit you in the stomach. So there is that. Now it may or may not stick, it may just bounce off. In that case, the plastic hit him. So maybe if that was a metal, it would've, it would've worked. But we'll just say it just, it hit, it cut, it deflected, then I have a chance to kind of go in because as soon as you have a blade coming at you, this is your tendency to do. And at least I've got him out of the picture for a second and then I can work on this guy over here. Conversely, if I'm on the opposite side, I might do the left hand. I'll just practice both sides. I got a good grip here. It doesn't matter if this grip's in either grip, but again, I'm just gonna spin it over here. I could go horizontally, downward, doesn't matter. There's the throw, there's the slash, and then I could come back to this person. So there may be times when you wanna keep both knives, but I may have a third knife in my pocket too. So it really depends on situational. Never, if, if you're not confident with the throws, then don't do it but sometimes it's gonna help you buy some time to the other person. So the whole drill is go up there, that'd be as hard as I can. I may just leave it there and that bought me time to go here and come back to this guy. Or it may be me throwing it here with that hand or that hand, doesn't matter. The other hand's gonna come in and I bought myself time to come over here. So you're in the middle, you got the two knives. We're just gonna kinda stay here in a distance. You're just gonna throw it at one person. You can either throw it and come at him, or you can throw it at him and come at me and then go back to him. Does that make sense? And do the opposite now. So you're gonna throw it at me, and you can either come to me on the final attack, or you can chase him and come back to me. Good. And that doesn't have to be a stick. He can be throwing a war club, he can throw a tomahawk, he can, you know, the bigger the object, the more it's gonna buy him time on the opposite person because they're trying to deflect it. And then we'll switch it, now you're in the middle. There you go. Nice. And then switch it out. <laughs> nice. And even with a plastic one, there's always that reaction of, oh, wow, okay, I just got hit by something. So a great practice that, the more you practice, the more you can see it. And also put lipstick on it. The person wearing a white t-shirt, you can see where it would have hit. Sometimes it goes so fast it doesn't hurt. But even if you throw that as hard as you can, it's still gonna hurt somebody, especially if you hit them in the face or the eye. 